Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. Tuesday morning, last week of May, and we've made serious progress with the extension to the cold rooms. As you can see, we have safety rail atop the three new rooms, and we've made some serious progress in terms of insulating. You can see we've got 25 mil insulation at the top. 25 mil insulation on the back walls. The end here is sporting some 50 mil insulation, which came from a partition between these old cold rooms, if you like. Just have to fabricate some doors, which we've got this stuff for. I went and picked up some hollow angle, which is this stuff down on the floor, and that's good enough to make the doors with. Also we've put the staircase into position and the handrails up. I'm now kicking myself because I should have measured the depth there to make sure that the pilot kit will fit. I'll do that right away actually. So we've just got to make the doors out of these 50mm boards here. I would have used 75, I used 75 on the others but couldn't get any. Oddly enough, there's a shortage of building materials in the UK. Nobody's got any plywood. I had to go to three places to get some plywood. Nobody's got any insulation. Nobody's got any timber. It's almost like we've come out of some type of trade union and we're finding it difficult to import things into the country. No idea why. No idea why a country would be so stupid as to impose restrictions upon itself. But here we are. Nevertheless, we plough on, don't we? We pay more for stuff, because now the pound's worth nothing to the euro. And uh, what we can buy is expensive, and all the rest of it ain't available in the UK. Yay, this is good for business, isn't it? Sunlit uplands and all that. Anyway, mini rant over. So, today's job, let's make some doors up. Let's get the cold room put together. Let's get this project put to bed because we've had an extraordinary couple of weeks in the pub and we need to make sure that we've got somewhere for all of this beer to go and also we need to be able to get these cans into storage I'm hoping actually that these are beginning to firm up and carbonate oh yeah that feels like it's stiffened up a bit that's the raspberry sour so there they'll be good to go hopefully what we've got in here, these are the lager beers, lager style, which didn't turn out to be lager style in the end. Probably not as carbonated as the rest. And then in here we have the mango. Again, little ways to go on them, but they've not been in a warm room, they've just been sat at ambient temperatures. And today, in here, we could go and have a look. And I think, if it'll show up on the camera, we're only at 12 degrees today, so it's not exactly carbing temperatures, is it? But it is what it is. So, yeah, next job, as I said, doors on, measure to make sure that that pilot kit fits down the side before I progress any further, and then get everything put up on the mezzanine, tidied up and ready for us to take the beers out of the tanks in the coming days or even just doing some research with the dry hops is impossible at this stage and I'd also like to brew some more beer next week we shall see sliced up some of the foam some of the plywood some of the hollow angle and we now have three new cauldron doors so this is a sandwich essentially of plywood on the front to give it some stiffness, the foam insulation in the middle and then it's sandwiched around the border with the hollow angle and that provides us a nice solid door which uh, which stands up to being moved around really quite well. I uh, just need to make a couple of handles for it so these are the handles that we settled on for this design and it works really quite well because these are the locks for the door, just rotate up and away. 
they sit on top of the handles and then each handle is like one pretty much near your left kind of thigh area next one at right thigh even next one near the left shoulder area and then when you grab hold of it you can take the weight with your right hand down here and then this one kind of guides it out they're really really easy to manipulate and maneuver so the handles are just made from the offcuts of the timber that we've used for the framing and we've just chopped up roughly a couple of pieces of wood like so and then I've set the depth stop on the saw and just gone backwards and forwards and taken a load of chumps out of it and it's really kind of quite easy to just get the hammer and bash them out just snap them, snap them off just like that very simple and then we're going to take this over to the bandsaw and then we'll just tidy this up and uh, flatten the inside out so I'll just turn the volume down a touch And then kind of finally, if you want to, if you're so inclined, you can just run a little finishing router around the edges just to tidy this edge up, which uh, I think I've got one down there, but it's a 110 volt and the transformer's next door with the lights for the marquee. So I might have to set up the one on the bench. We'll see. Jump forwards, oh, six hours, something like that. Well, let's go and have a look. I've just lumped, oh, this is all my timber stock up there, look. So that's where it now lives. And we've cleared the lines. So yes, a little bit tighter now. A little bit more of a narrow workspace. So we've got the stainless tanks on one side and the cold rooms on the other. And I'm going to go up the steps actually. Let's go up onto the little gantry which services the back of these particular tanks. And we'll have a look at all this cam stock here which now needs to go into these cold rooms. There we are, seven cold rooms. Oh, what a job that really was. So, it'd be nice if I could get them all painted the same colour as well, to be honest. That'd look good, wouldn't it? Maybe even some graffiti murals on there. I don't know. Maybe not today. So, I'm just waiting for the remote cooler to arrive, which has got a five-week lead time from Brandles, I think it is, in Leicester. So I've got one of them come in, hopefully that's going to provide enough juice to run those three new cold rooms at the very least. Probably five of them, or six of them, and then I'll just use a smaller one down the bottom for the, for the uh, hop store, maybe. We'll see, we'll see. It might be powerful enough to do all seven, who knows, but the obvious outlier in the data is the cold room at the bottom wants to sit at five degrees where everything else wants to be at 11. But it certainly is a different perspective isn't it folks? Absolutely. So we've rearranged all this section. The pilot kit does fit down there but I actually think the element leads on the back so I have to make sure that I haven't broken them. 
So let's go up the creaky steps. Look at that, you can see all the way through to the other side. So I've got this timber to put away yet. On this side we've got a little service there, a little tray to catch any water out of this box gutter, which I haven't got around to doing yet. Mainly because, well we're waiting on the weather aren't we? But that just needs lining with glass fibre and hopefully that will be problem solved. But any leakage, this is the only bit by the way, the roof is uh, the roof's golden now. This is the only bit and if it does leak it will run down and it will land on the floor at the side of the pilot kit and away, not a problem. Not worried about it to be fair. We've got our steel and timber rack which was mounted on this wall where the cold room now is. That's now carrying stainless, mild steel, timber, everything else. It's bolted to the safety rail and it's got some little standoffs on the bottom so it doesn't pull the rail over. Down the bottom there we've got the spare casks. So we'll go and have a look. Why not? So this is the spare resin that we've got for the final coat. Once I'm happy that everything down there is good. Then we've got the cement mixer, some coolers, some cask locators, some cask auto tilts, some 80 litre firkins, kilderkins actually, my toolbox with all my art equipment in for mural painting, and then all this spare timber and insulation. And then more, more casks through there as you can see. Oh look a chainsaw. Huh. So here we go. Another perspective on the brewery from up above. Does kind of look pretty smart doesn't it? Looks nice and neat. You'll notice on the edge of the drain there a little bit where the resin came up that was a bit of cement that I laid and it hadn't quite dried when I applied the resin so that's my bad can't blame resin coat for that. So just a little bit, I'm letting that cure and dry out while we're not doing any work in it. In fact, now it's been dry for a good week or two, I might pop some primer on that tomorrow. We shall see. Kitchen area, pilot kit zone. I think we've got about as much in here as we can get now. So we're gonna work with what we've got. I don't think you're gonna see many more major projects in here in terms of us moving stuff around. I think we're pretty much uh, rammed. The only thing I want to work on is the grain store down there. So if I just duck and dive under this section here, you'll see that we've got the grain store is down here and workshop through there, rollers, remote cooler for the cold rooms that we've already got. That needs looking at, it's leaking. So, yeah, all I'm thinking about is keeping the dust down and contemplating putting something on this wall or just across this section here. But it isn't that bad to be honest. I'm very careful when I pour the grain out that we don't get dust spraying all over the place. So come with me as we dive back under the rafters in the roof space and let's scuttle them back down the stairs the precarious stairs and into the brewing space once again I'm pretty chuffed with that folks so there we go have I got dirt all over me face? I probably have uh, We've got lots of casking to do the next week or two. Seven of these tanks are full of beer. It's going to have to come out next week at some point. So now we've completed this major overhaul of the cold room area. I think we're ready now to move on to uh, tidying her up, packaging, and then maybe in a couple of weeks' time we'll pull out the pilot kit again and we'll have another go, maybe at those lager recipes that we've been talking about and the Pilsner recipes, see if we can't crack it. But until then, thank you for joining me and we'll see you 
on the next one. Cheers.